Okay, here you can see the pulse generator chip in operation. You can see the power supply line, in our case 5 volts, but it can be a voltage between 5 volts and 9 volts. And a connection to the host computer, a Windows PC in our case. It's a USB connection, and the USB connection makes the connection to the Windows client, the Windows Pulse Generator client is here. And according to parameter input, I will give you some more information in a short while. And there are only two single connections to my oscilloscope. One connection is the ground connection to the supply ground of the chip. And the other connection is the connection to an output port. This output port is usually used for uh, pulsing galvanically decoupled switches or coils or EC. Okay, what we can see here on the screen, there's a single pulse and some gating. And what you can see is frequency around about 2.1 milliseconds. Now you can see here that the pulse train consists of one single pulse. You saw it on the screen of the oscilloscope. And at uh, 5000 Hz, and a gating time of 1900 microseconds. So 1900 plus 200 is 2100 microseconds. That is the value you can see here for the whole thing. For ease of usage, I can increment. the pulse train repetition to 2 and when I do this you can see there are two of these pulses. I go back to 1, I increase to 2 or increase to 3. If you can't see exactly the number of pulses it means that the triggering doesn't work that well for the oscilloscope, but if I would adjust it, you would see that it's a direct increment. Now you have five pulses, like here, repetition rate five, six pulses, seven pulses, eight pulses, nine pulses, ten pulses, eleven pulses, twelve pulses. It's, it's really exact what you can change in parameters. And those blips you are seeing have nothing to do with the pulse generation itself. It are blips that are introduced into the system by the grid. They are grid initiated distortions of the signal. So you can ignore them here nothing to do with the pulse generation of the generator. If all was shielded, there would be no blips. Okay, now let's stretch the time base and I take another parameter, the duty cycle, 50%, and make a change. I change it in increments of 1%, and 
the increments go up. 51, 52. Now it's 60. 68, 69, 70. 79, 80. I can go up to 99%. Now that duty cycle is at 96% for 10 pulses, I will make a change in another parameter field increment. This increment means it was 1 and now I have changed it to 10. And it means that I can change the duty cycle in, in steps of 10. I now I have to reduce from 96, one click, and it's 86. That way I can make major changes in duty cycle. 76, 66, 56, 46. I will stretch the time base, but you can see it. 36, 26, 16, 6 percent, and so on. Okay, now I go back to 50 percent duty cycle, and if I make a click, it's an immediate change to 50 that way. And now I want to point to another feature. The feature means I can give the frequency. Let's make an increment of 1000 so that every click makes a change of 1000. Here you can see it's 9000 Hz. I can also change it at 9000 Hz at a duty cycle of 50% means fifty-five point fifty-six microseconds on and fifty-five point five six microseconds off. Now I change to ten thousand and you see there's an immediate update. Of microseconds on and off. The other way around of course also works. I can increment, let's change now. Now I can change microseconds off from 50 to 60 and watch the pulse frequency field at the left. It's immediately updated and of course now the duty cycle has changed because now US on and US off differ from each other and that means there's another duty cycle. So there are many ways to play around with parameters and most beneficial is that you always have a brief overview over your parameters. Whatever you change, you can replicate it on demand. You can know the parameters or in a future version maybe there will be a protocol file that traces your parameter input. But up to now you can make a hard copy of the screen or so and that way you can document your actual parameters. Okay, now I want to implement the second pulse train. At first I have to switch off gating, setting this parameter to zero.
now you can see there's a continuous pulsing without any gating and once again ignore the blips there from the grid something unshielded with the scope makes these grid driven blips please ignore it okay to make things easier I go back to 5000 Hertz I did duty cycle of 50 percent this is our condition now for a repetition rate of 10 and now I add the frequency of 10,000 Hertz also duty cycle 50% For a repetition rate of 10 or no let's say for 20 because it's double frequency and now let's try to fix it on the screen it's a bit tricky with Oh, I, I think I have to make a major change in triggering back here again in a minute. Now back again. With my triggering of the scope, I can't get a static picture of the waveforms. So I have to play a trick. Uh, I have to use the freeze function of my triggering and now I push the trigger and you can see now that it's a snapshot of the pulse condition that the pulse train consists of those 20 pulses at 50 microseconds on and 50 microseconds off followed by 10 pulses of 100 microseconds on and 100 microseconds off. I can further play reducing duty cycle of 10 kilohertz sequence 40, 30. 20% and use on use off is adjusted immediately and on the other hand I can increase duty cycle for the 5 kilohertz to 80% and that will show a real difference I will freeze the pick now and what you can see is 5 kilohertz with 80% duty cycle and 10 kilohertz with 10% duty cycle on. If you want, you can add another gating time. Now, let's say for what makes sense, 1000 microseconds and let's have a look now you can see 5 kilohertz followed by 10 kilohertz and then a gating off space time of 1 millisecond There are many ways to play around with the circuit. There is another field, immediate update. That means if it's, if it's activated, you can, all, all changes you're doing are 
realized in real time. As soon as you click, the change makes a difference on the scope. If you undo the immediate update, you have time to prepare whatever parameter you want to change, and the change will be activated only if you pulse an update. Let's do that. Okay, I have made the change, but in this condition on the screen there is no difference because triggering doesn't work with these complicated pulse strings. Okay, you can put in up to eight those pulse sequences within a single channel. And the firmware supports up to three independent channels. That means you can set up, for example, for the channel now, a coil pulsing for channel one. Uh, let's say an LED pulsing for an ECC, an O for, uh, for a gas process or something like this, and the third channel for anything else you want. There are some other fields for COM port selection. Of course, the microcontroller is connected via USB to the personal computer, but these USB ports are mapped to conventional old-fashioned COM ports. We selected the application itself supports to make this choice. You have the choice to make a firmware update if necessary can be downloaded from the internet or can be sent by mail to you and then you can make, make an update. The actual firmware is displayed somewhere in the right corner here. And last but not least to be said the application of this Windows Pulse Generator also supports an integration into your own application. This PC connection also works without the Windows client towards a terminal program. You can put in manual data, uh, some kind of specific sequence you know, to activate the Pulse Generator and results are sent through this serial connection to your terminal program. And if you use your own application instead of a terminal program, you have full control about the pulse generator operation. This is the Windows version, and I will make another video for the LCD version and another video for the switches.